Hello everyone. In this next section, we will look at two types of errors, systematic and random errors. In this section, we will seek to understand how to make the distinction between these two types of error. So in 3.1 and 3.2, we will each look at the type of error, what are the characteristics of this type of error, what are the examples, and finally, how to reduce these, exam these errors. Firstly, for systematic error. Systematic error are errors where it, it is it occur according to some fixed pattern or rule such that the keyword it is it is a consistent type of error so if repeated measurements yield the same error in magnitude and sign or if the value is predictable then these errors are classified under systematic error examples of systematic error of course includes the classic one zero error in your practical handbook you will be given more details on how uh, more details about zero error. Other examples, of course, include faulty instrument, making wrong assumptions, and consistently using the wrong experimental technique. Note that since systematic error is always the same magnitude and sign, then it cannot be reduced by taking statistical mean. So systematic error can be reduced by either recalibrating the instrument or by modifying the experimental techniques. Next, in contrast, we look at random error. Random error, as the name suggests, are unpredictable in nature. So when you take repeated measurements, you will use different magnitude and sign. Examples of random error include Variation in the condition of the measuring instrument and variation arising from the inability of an observer to measure small intervals. For example, human reaction time uh, inconsistent in starting and stopping a stopwatch. Other examples include fluctuating external conditions like temperature or air pressure. And in some cases, the quantity that you are supposed to measure itself will have irregularity, so causing random results. Because random error have an equal chance of uh, being positive and negative, so if you take a lot of readings, the, these readings tend to offset each other statistically. So one way to reduce random error, random error is by taking a number of repeated readings and finding the average. In example 3.1, we look at how a graph will reveal both systematic and random errors. So firstly, if assuming quantity A is directly proportional to quantity B, so if you have perfect results with no random error or systematic error, then you expect a straight line graph passing to the origin. This is indicated by this black line here. Perfect results. If you have only random errors but no systematic error, then you will get this set of data indicated by the plus sign. So the line of best fit is a form of averaging. So random errors are indicated by a scatter of lines, scatter of the data points on both sides of the line. If you have systematic error, then what you have without random errors, then what you have is this kind of line indicated by the triangle where you get consistently results that are off by the same amount. So you will get a straight line graph, but it does not pass through origin. When you do practical experiment, you will encounter both uh, types of uh, discount data. So to summarize, systematic errors are consistent and therefore predictable. 
and in contrast random errors are random and therefore because they are random they are unpredictable how do you reduce systematic error systematic error can be reduced by recalibration or modification random errors can be reduced by taking average so for the next section before we move on to precision and accuracy in data readings please watch in l in sls a tech ad video on what's the difference between accuracy and precision enjoy and i'll see you in the next video